a lot of people have this odd respect for economists and they consider the field of economics to be a science. Economics is not a science. Science has predictive value. In other words, you can apply the theories of science and predict what's going to occur in the future. Economists can't do this, otherwise they would become wealthy by speculating in the market. Now it is possible, in my opinion, to apply basic logic and a scientific process to help predict what the markets are going to do. I retired myself in my 30s by doing this, and there are a lot of people that are far better at it than me, people like Jim Rogers, David Einhorn, Warren Buffett. But most economists don't know how to do this. Most economists don't apply logic and don't have a scientific process. That's why they can't make money in the market. Not only is economics not a science, but Keynesian economics is not even a pseudoscience. They don't even attempt to apply basic logic or scientific principles to anything. Keynesian economics is basically a field of propaganda. And I know that sounds like a really strong statement, so let me go into it. One of the basic principles of Keynesian economics is that you lower interest rates, provide liquidity, and therefore stimulate economic growth. They're basically saying that by increasing the paper currency supply, you can increase the production of real value within a society. Hopefully that's intuitively illogical to anyone to begin with. I mean, if that were logical, you would just legalize counterfeiting and everyone would become wealthy or if Keynesian economists are going to say that no, that money has to be invested, then you would legalize counterfeiting, but with the caveat that all counterfeiters must then invest the money that they have counterfeited. But you can't really debate Keynesian economists on this because, like anyone else who practices propaganda, they simply repeat the same thing ad nauseum until it sticks in many people's minds. The real danger of Keynesian economics is that it's set up as a theory to excuse banking practices which are unfair and monopolistic. There are basically two ways in which the banking industry is able to monopolize the economy and siphon off wealth for itself without actually creating anything. First of all, large banks get money from the Federal Reserve at a low interest rate, currently at 0% interest, and then they turn around and relend that money to everyone else in society at a higher interest rate. This gives them an absolute monopoly on the issuance of credit. No one can compete with them. They will always be at the top of the food chain when it comes to creating and issuing money. And why are these large banks allowed to get money at 0% and lend it to everyone else at a higher interest rate? Why aren't individuals or companies or small banks allowed to get this 0% money? Well, it's basically just because the large banks are politically connected. It's not because those large banks have a great record with investing that money. If you remember, they just needed hundreds of billions of dollars in bailouts uh, over the last couple of years. These large banks should be the last entities who should be given money to reinvest. And there's a second way that banks guarantee their monopoly over the issuance of credit. They use fractional reserve banking. Banks take in money from individuals and they promise, we'll have your money here when you come for it. And then the banks turn around and relend that money. And there is no guarantee that the loans will be good. So it's a type of fraud. Now when this fractional reserve banking fraud collapses inevitably as it has throughout history, there are a couple things the banks do. First, since the banks basically control the central bank, they induce the central bank to pump a lot of extra currency into society, and then the loans are paid off through inflated currency. But more importantly than that, banks have one special advantage that nobody else gets. There are all kinds of government guaranteed loans. So the banks can lend money and take profit when the loans are profitable, and when the loans become unprofitable, the banks simply shift all of the losses onto the taxpayers through these government guaranteed loans. And finally, if the losses are so great that they exceed the government guaranteed loans, then the banks simply get special bailouts as they have for the last couple of years for hundreds of billions of dollars. Now Keynesian economists will apologize again for this practice by saying, well, it's necessary for us to bail out the banks and back the bank loans, otherwise the banks wouldn't be able to provide these loans and provide credit to grow the economy. Hopefully, again, you can see that that's not particularly logical at face value, but let's say you buy that argument. Let's say you believe that it's necessary for us to continually bail out the banking industry when the banking industry commits the fraud of fractional reserve banking. Ask yourself, why do the banks get special treatment during their bankruptcy? Normally when a company goes bankrupt, the assets are liquidated and sold to new owners, and that helps offset, offset the loss. But when the taxpayers bail out these large banks, the owners of the large banks still retain control. Their ownership is not liquidated, and the sale of that ownership doesn't offset the loss to the taxpayers. The taxpayers are taking an even bigger loss 
for no reason other than to allow the ownership of these large banks to remain intact. Now even Keynesian economists can't really come up with an apology for that one. It's really time we recognized that Keynesian economics is not science and it shouldn't be allowed to be portrayed as such in the public school system. Keynesian economic theory is taught in high schools across the country as part of the standard curriculum and it's taught at taxpayer expense in universities across the country. If you're going to teach any economics, you should at least teach the competing theories like Austrian economics, which make a lot more sense. If anyone tries to teach a non-scientific religious theory in the school system, there's an uproar, and rightly so. And yet, Keynesian economics is even more dangerous than most religious non-science because it doesn't really matter whether you believe the Earth is 6,000 years old. When the public is conditioned into believing that it's okay for a small group of banks to have an exclusive monopoly over the issuance of credit, that's a dangerous belief.